Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. Drone airliner collision claimed by Canadian authorities. Class action lawsuit filed against the FAA over drone registry. CNN receives Part 107 waiver for operations over people. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. Recent reports about a mid-air collision between a jet and a drone have been misstated or based on pretty tenuous detail. Worse, Canada's Mark Renault, their Minister of Transport, has jumped all over the story, even issuing a press release long before any real detail has emerged. So what do we know? On October 12, 2017, a Skyjet Beach King Air 100, a turboprop, not a jet, was on an IFR flight to the Jean Lesage International Airport in Quebec City, Quebec, with eight people on board. The aircraft was approaching runway 24 and had just passed the final approach fix when the crew claims to have seen a drone at the extremity of the left wing. The aircraft allegedly struck the suspected UAV at an altitude of 1,500 feet and the crew declared an emergency. The aircraft landed safely. Inspections revealed a few scratches and some paint transfer on the top surface of the left wing and scrape marks on the de-icing boot. The aircraft was then returned to service. No one was injured. No physical evidence proving a drone strike has reportedly been found. The report of paint transfer is curious as few drones are painted, and no other reports indicate that drone wreckage or an operator has been found. We await further verifiable detail. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. Last fall, the Swedish Supreme Administrative Court ruled that a camera mounted on a drone is considered a CCTV camera for purposes of the Swedish Camera Surveillance Act. New legislation has now been passed to exempt the private use of drone cameras from the permit requirements, making drone use in Sweden legal again on August 1, 2017. AMA will be attending the Rocky Mountain Hobby Expo in Denver, Colorado, October 28th and 29th, 2017, to promote AMA's programs, member services, and the model aviation hobby. The intent of the event is to promote participation in different hobbies, including but not limited to model aviation and other RC activities. Thousands are expected to attend the inaugural Rocky Mountain Hobby Expo, sponsored by the Hobby Manufacturers Association. Finally, some good drone news. Western Australia-based Shark Alert International has developed a multi-spectral drone camera that it says can x-ray the water to detect the signature of a shark down to about 35 feet. The cameras are not hindered by waves, choppy water, or glare from the sun. The information is then passed to lifeguards on the beach in real time, allowing them to alert swimmers that a shark is nearby. Kitty Hawk has introduced their second generation DJI Sync app. DJI Sync 2.0 Kitty Hawk claims that DJI Sync 2.0 is fully automated, offering full telemetry, allowing for extensive data access. Kitty Hawk also notes that now that they have DJI Sync 2.0 completed, that their roadmap includes the introduction of new integrations with discussion with other manufacturers underway to make it easier to deliver data to Kitty Hawk user accounts. That was our Drone Minute, now back to the rest of the news. A drone operator from Arkansas named Michael Reichert has filed a class action lawsuit against the FAA because he has not yet received a refund for his $5 drone registration fee. Reichert registered his drone as was required by the FAA, but when a federal judge deemed that the registration was in violation of the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012, he contacted the FAA for a refund. The FAA responded to his initial request, made in June, only to redirect him to another office for the refund. He attempted to contact that office and has followed up with other emails and phone calls with no response. 
Rikert is seeking to have the FAA refund all the registration fees it has collected, including those who voluntarily registered after the judge deemed that the drone registration was contrary to law. He is also seeking payment of attorney fees. Drone attorney Jonathan Rupert reports that, quote, the FAA recklessly went into creating the drone registration regulations. They went ahead contrary to regulatory procedural law, as well as the prohibition placed upon them by Section 336 of the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012 to create a regulation governing model aircraft. The D.C. Circuit Court struck down the drone registry as applied to model aircraft as illegal in the Taylor v. Huerta case. The FAA has awarded the first Part 107 waiver for operation over people to CNN. This approval represents an industry milestone, and this new waiver for the first time will enable real-world UAS operations over people. The waiver allows CNN to fly the Vantage Robotics SNAP UAS to conduct operations over open-air assemblies, or crowds, of people up to 150 feet above ground level. Quote, this waiver signifies a critical step forward, not only for CNN's UAS operations, but also the commercial UAS industry at large, said David Vigilante, SVP for Legal at CNN. The FAA waiver authorizes CNN to operate the SNAP UAS, a frangible 1.37-pound aircraft with enclosed rotors that is made of deformable material over people. CNN's successful waiver application is a product of over two years of research and testing on the part of CNN and Vantage Robotics. CNN's waiver application was based on the reasonableness approach under which the applicant's ability to operate the UAS safely over people is determined based on the totality of circumstances, including the operator's safe history of operations, the safety features of the aircraft, and test data demonstrating that the UAS is safe to operate over people. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week. 